nation Well then call for to show his excellence All I require for life God has given me For I know who I am I know who God says I am What he says I am Where he says I'm at I know who I am I know who God says I am What he says I am
Sister Ebi Wakalume, good morning. Sister Imi, good morning. Sister Derika, good morning. Sister Ugu, good morning. Sister Mary, good morning. Welcome to Healing My Grace. Network behave today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, the, um, our case study was posted yesterday. I hope we all got a time to read it, to go through it. I hope we got the opportunity to go through it, but I'm going to take it now. Please like and share this broadcast. Like and share. Welcome to Healing Marriages. This uh, program has been brought to us by the Ministry of Daughters of Destiny Interdenominational Fellowship. Healing Marriage is a place where we come to share deep insights concerning our marriages that will help our marriages and cause our marriages to thrive, as well as a time of healing for those who are hurting in their marriages. Healing Marriage has been produced by Apostle Fusola Degede of the Ministry of Daughters of Destiny, and my name is Vivian Nnamdingwatuku. Good morning. I love you all. Good to see you. Please like and share this broadcast. Amen. Like and share. Amen. So I'll be taking the case study now. I'll be taking the case study now. Yeah. Okay, she says, volume. They need volume. Is it for me or for me? I hope you all had a chance to read the uh, case study. It was posted on the page. Let me um, let me send to somebody to also put the link. Is the volume okay now? Can I go ahead? Okay. So that's the same volume is low. Can I go ahead? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So um, the case study says, my husband and I have been married for seven years now, and we are trusting God. And we are trusting God for children. We have done all manner of fertility tests, and the doctor said we are okay, and nothing is wrong with both of us. So we are waiting on God for the miracle of children. The only problem I have is my mother-in-law. Since we got married, I've not known peace in my home because of her. Mama moved in with us on the day of our wedding and has since been occupying one of the rooms in our house. Meanwhile, she has her own house in the village and visits there from time to time, but her house has become her base for five, for, yeah, for seven years now. Before I came into this family, I was told that Mama brought a woman for my husband to marry, but he rejected her. Few months later, when he took me home to introduce me to Mama, she gave me a cold welcome. I didn't allow that to get to me. I thought she did that because I was a new face and all. But up till now, she hasn't changed. She once told me that I will know no peace in this house. I told my husband about it, and he brought it aside saying that, that is how Mama talks, and that she is still angry at him for not choosing the woman she brought for him to marry. He told me that I, should, I shouldn't get offended by her statement. I've been experiencing a lot mentally and emotionally since I got married. Mama does not allow me cook for my husband. She wakes up early in the morning to prepare breakfast for him and lunch to take to work. When it's evening, she calls him to find out what he would like to eat for dinner and she prepares it for him. It's annoying that my husband does not see anything wrong with all this. He has never for once cautioned Mama about it. He just goes with the flow like it is normal. I have spoken to him about this several times, asking why he is allowing Mama to come between us, and his response was that he can't send her away, and because he is her last child, she is so fond of him, and that is why she does all that. He said I should learn to accommodate her, but it keeps getting worse. Recently, as soon as my husband returned from work, Mama came to our bedroom to gist with him. Then she told me to please excuse them, and I did. They continued gisting, and she took his dinner to the room, and he ate while they gisted. The height of it was when I entered the room to refresh and go to bed, I found Mama sleeping on our bed. My husband, too, had slept off. I had to wake Mama up and that posed another problem. She told me that I should go to another room to sleep and allow her to continue, to continue her sleep in our room. 
To make matters worse, my husband woke up and started scolding me for disturbing his mother. That since she is already asleep in her room, I should go to the guest room to sleep. I was shocked and I went to the guest room. My heart was torn into two and I barely slept that night. The next morning, Mama started mocking me and calling me names, saying that I'm a man and a man cannot be sleeping with another man on the bed. I was trying to tolerate these abuses. I even called my sister-in-law to help resolve it, and she has spoken to Mama several times, but Mama has refused to listen. My husband keeps telling everyone to stay away from his home and stop interfering, that Mama is his mother and she can stay with him for as long as he pleases and can do whatever she wants. I'm being maltreated in my home, and this is too much on me. I don't even have a relationship with my husband anymore. We don't talk or play. Anytime I want to talk to him, Mama always comes to sit down to listen to our conversation. My husband had me fix calls during work hours, so I can't even squeeze out time to talk to him when he's at work. I'm tired of this marriage already. And I don't know what to do because my husband is not helping matters at all. He is just not saying anything. Please advise me. Amen. That's our case study. That's our case study. Good morning, Sister Enne. Good morning, Sister Morayo. Good morning, Sister Stephanie. Good morning. Sister Temitoke, good morning. Sister Aderoke, good morning. Ntiri Rita, good morning. Ogom Evelyn, good morning. Saket Achoda, good morning. Yeah, good morning. So that's our case study. That's our case study. You know, we all know the popular scripture, the, Bible, the place in scripture that God says a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they shall become one. And at another place, it says, what God has put together, let no man separate. Let no man put asunder. You know, that is our biblical guidance. That is what should guide us as children of God, the Bible. The Bible should always be our base. So, um, I want to, my first question is, can you please address um, issues regarding, you know, when a couple is waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb? When a couple is waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb, what do you think should be the man's disposition? And what do you think should be the woman's disposition while waiting? You know, some people are, some people are lucky when they, as soon as they get married, they get pregnant and have children. But some people, you know, they have to wait. You know, they have to wait for some years, depending. You know, so what do you, um, what, what do you say? What can you address this issue regarding what do you think a couple's disposition should be while waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb? What do you think should be the man's disposition? And what do you think should be the woman's disposition? Thank you, Sister Abigail. She said, this is a very simple matter. Thank you so much, Abigail. So I'm waiting to hear a lot from you. Please, stop pouring them in. Let us see them. Let's have your comments. Let's have your co comments. Bule, I can see you. Good morning. Sagillian, I see you. Good morning. So let's have your comments, Abigail. Everyone, please, let's have your contributions. Let's have your contributions. What's your take? What should be the man's disposition while waiting on the Lord, you know, for the fruit of the womb? What should be a man's disposition? What should be a woman's disposition? You know, from this case study, summary of the case study, this couple have been married for like seven years, you know, and, and from her account, she said, as from the wedding, her mother-in-law moved in with them right after the wedding, you know, and has been living with, with them, you know, and has made um, their home her base. Meanwhile, she has a house of her own in the village, but she travels from time to time to the village, but the base is where her son lives with his wife. You know, and so she said, um, you know, and, and the, the problem is she has is with her mother-in-law because she constantly cooks for her husband. She doesn't allow her to cook. She constantly cooks for her husband, gets up in the morning, prepares breakfast, prepares, then packs the lunch for the afternoon. Before he comes back in the evening, she calls him to ask him, what are you going to eat for dinner? You know, and all of that. So she takes care of everything her son eats. And then when he comes home, the distance as my communication to with her husband is kind of um, shaky because her mother-in-law takes this every opportunity to talk to her son. 
You know, and even when she's having some private moments with her, with her husband, like when they're dissing, her mother-in-law comes in between to listen to their conversation. So she, she says she basically has no time to talk to him. And uh, even at work, because she, you know, it's a, it's a workplace, so that, you know, there's no time for this. You know, there's no time she has to, to diss or communicate with him. And then there was this night, she said, okay, there was this day where she said her mother-in-law came into the room and, and she had to excuse them because they asked her to excuse them and they said well, they were just it. You know, from there he ate dinner, the, the mother-in-law brought dinner for her son, you know, they ate, you know, and from there they both dozed off. And she came in because she wanted to, to sleep and when she woke uh, her mother-in-law up, the mother-in-law said, can't you see I'm sleeping, why are you bothering me? Go look for another room to sleep. And her husband got up and scolded her and said, can't you see mama is sleeping, go to another room, go to the guest room. And she said she was quite offended, you know, and that she's, she's very uh, uncomfortable in her home. You know, she's like a stranger in her home, and that she's, um, she's, she's um, tired of this marriage. She's getting tired of this marriage already. So what do we advise her? You know, so my first question, my first question is, what do you think a man's disposition, because this is not the first um, 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 story on childless, on a childless couple. People, I've known people who have waited for years. You know, so what do you think a man's disposition should be while waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb? What do you think a woman's disposition should be while waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb? Yeah, good morning, Sir Ngozi, Sir Feyi, good morning, Sir Kende, good morning, Sir Olivia, good morning, Sir Taiwo, good morning. Good morning, Sir Joker, good morning. Yeah, so what do you think a, a man's disposition, what do you think a man's disposition should be? What do you think um, a woman's disposition should be? The Connors patients, good morning. Yeah. Kate at Soda, good morning. You have just said hello. Yeah. So please um let's have let's have your contributions. Let's have your contributions. What do you think a man's disposition should be? What do you think a woman's disposition should be? You know, while waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb. You know, so you know, because um life is really life is indeed a journey. Life is indeed a journey, it's not, it's not a walk in the park. And it's different for different folks, it's different for different people. Different people have different experiences. I remember what Apostle um, um, said to us several some years ago. She said her mom told her that marriage is like, you know, it's like, you know, the, the, the granules in, in the, the, that come with a shell. You know, when you crack the shell open, that what you see is what you get. You know, so when you open it and you know this is, and you find out that this is my reality, you begin to pray on that. Amen. You begin to pray on that. So we all have uh, various realities. This is my case. This is my, you know, people have different, different things because it's a journey. What is, what, what's your journey of, of life? It might not be my, your own journey might not be childlessness or maybe you didn't experience waiting on the Lord for long. Or, you know, yours could be something else. But in, in every way, it is a journey. There are, there are things that you find out that you meet in this journey that some other person won't experience. There are some other things some other person might experience that you might not experience. So it's different. But in the case of this couple, it's um, the fruit of the womb. They've been married for seven years and they're still waiting on God, on the Lord for the fruit of the womb. So what do you think your dispos um, their disposition should be while waiting? Amen. Sister Vera, good morning. Sister Doris, good morning. That's easy, yes. That's easy, good morning. So what do you think their disposition should be? You know, what do you think their disposition should be? Many a times in the Bible, we hear, we hear about the fruit of the Spirit, love, peace, patience, gentleness. So among the fruit of the Spirit, patience is the, is the fruit of the Spirit. Patience. You know, you might be seeking something, you've not yet gotten it. You know, so it behoves on the child, on the child of God, patience. You know, patience is a virtue. You know, so um, we are, there are different things, like some, 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 it could be gentleness. There are some, many areas. For instance, my work love, my work love might be, my, 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 might be low, and some other person's own might be high. Some other person might be patient, because I know, I know when God, because as children of God, whatever I found, I've discovered from experience that in any way, in the ways you're lacking, you find situations that come to try you. In those aspects. And when those situations come to try you, what is it trying to bring out of you? So that it could bring out those virtues. For instance, if you lack patience, and then you find out that you have to wait 
for some things because it is not actually in your power. Those things are not actually in your power. All power belongs to God. And it is God that will determine, okay, when you're going to have it. In most cases, yes. In most cases, when, you know, it's God that determines when you're going to get it. You know, so it behoves on the child of God, patience. 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 So what do you think that disposition should be? Amen. So Abigail says she should take the mother-in-law to God in prayer. Mama is the son in the marriage. Yeah, take her mother-in-law to God in prayer. Thank you, Sister Abigail. You are not fighting her physically because our warfare is not a physical one, but it's a spiritual one. So she should take her mother-in-law to God in prayer, report it to God. Thank you, Sister Abigail. Thank you, God bless you. Sister, God is safe. We should live purposefully while waiting for a blessing. If we are living purpose, if we are living purpose, we will not remain stagnant or obsessed with the blessing when it comes. Thank you, Sister Ngozi. We should live, she says, we should live purposefully while waiting for a blessing. Yeah, you, I, you know, I understand that, Sister Ngozi, but we, when, you know, when you're living purposefully, for instance, in this case study, look, look, listen to her story. You know, um, this is a newly married couple, or this was a newly married couple, you know, and then their mother in law moves in with them without giving them any breathing space. She moves in with them. And in the course, because, uh, okay, first year goes no child, second year goes no child, third year, and she's beginning to call her name. A man cannot, for instance, she said to her one day, a man cannot be sleeping with another man on the bed. You know, so while you're trying to, you know, wait on God, and some people are, you know, you know, so you're saying that, okay, we should live purposefully, but while waiting, while waiting for the blessing, we should live purposefully, you know, and uh, not remain stagnant. But, you know, there are things that also come to you Apart from what you're facing, there are people who come to you and start rubbing your pain, you know, make, making it so, making, making you feel your pain deeper. Amen. Sister Olivia says she should be patient and not take any unwholesome in, insinuation from her husband or in laws personally. It's a trying time. She, she should have faith that all will be well. Thank you, Sister Olivia. She should have faith and not um, take any unwholesome insinuation from her husband or in-laws personally. Thank you, Sister Olivia. She should have faith in God. In other words, keep having faith, keep believing God that all will be well. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Olivia. Sister Gilliam says, as simple as it may sound, waiting for something you desire desperately is not easy. Mm. But God has given us the spirit of perseverance. Therefore, if we have done all medically, stand and faithfully and spiritually hold on to God. Remembering that, that Isaac entreated God and he answered him. Yeah, thank you, Sister Gillian. You know, when you're waiting on God for something that you desperately want, you know, it, it, it may sound easy, but it's not easy. But it's just that a, a work is going on in you, a work of patience, a work of perseverance is going on in you that will help, help you to endure that season. You know, that could be, it could be a trying time in one's life. You know, but having done all, you've done all medically, you've done all, you, you can, you can, you're praying to God, having done all, stand and stand on the word. Amen. Thank you, Sister, Sister Gillian. Sister Vera says, this marriage is one that has been hijacked from the witchcraft coven, and the mother of the husband should simply be uprooted from the house and be married by fire of the Holy Ghost. That is the only solution. All the issues in this marriage indicate that this marriage is under some form of spiritual manipulation. That is why there is no child, and the mother-in-law is in control. She needs to be uprooted. Thank you, Sister Vera. Deliverance Minister, Sister Vera, Sister Vera. Yeah, you know, this marriage definitely is under manipulation. It has been, her mother-in-law has hijacked her marriage. Her mother-in-law has seriously hijacked her marriage. You know, I asked somebody once, I asked a woman some years back, I said, Paul, oh, if you don't allow your daughter-in-law to live in her home and be wife to her husband and mother to her children, when we see, and because you've taken that position, so you're taking the position of being wife to her husband, who is your son, and the position of being mother, then where do you want her to, you know, to show her motherly, uh, her motherly affection or her, or her wifely affection and her, her play her wifely role and her motherly role in her family. That means you're telling her that she should also now wait for her son to get married so that she can replay what you have done to her. 
You know, so it's just like a vicious circle. If you don't take time, it begins to be witchcraft. That's why we must, that we must always take heed and always pay attention to the word of God. What is God saying on this matter? The first scripture I read, I said, a man will leave, the, the word of God says, a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. And what God has joined together, let no man separate. Whether you are mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law, friend, relation, let no man separate. That is the word of God. Amen. This marriage obviously has been hijacked. And it's, it's making her, it's really trying, you know, apart from the fact that she's waiting on the Lord for, for the fruit of the womb, for God to answer her, she's also having to deal with name calling to make her, not to, to make her lose her confidence and her self-worth. You know, when a woman starts, or when people start calling you, oh, are you, are you really, are you, are you a woman? You know, it starts to, you know, reduce you. The, 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 the main aim of that word is to reduce you and to make you lose your self worth. Thank you, Sister Vera. Thank you, Sister Vera. Sister Ine says, the man from the beginning knew the mother didn't like his choice of wife, so he expected that he should have been protective over the wife, support her, support her more, and look for ways to make the wife feel more loved, instead of always supporting his mother. Seeing the mother's disposition from day one should have been a pointer in that he wouldn't have allowed her live with them right from the outset. Thank you so much, Sister Ine, for that valid uh, point. Yes, that's what he should have done. That's what he ought to have done, knowing that his mom, you know, didn't quite like the, uh, the fact that, look, I brought a woman for you to marry, and you refused or rejected my choice, and you went and, and brought yours. You know, and then your mother is now coming to live with, with you, knowing you, and you know that she doesn't really like, like, like your wife or love your wife. You know, so you're making things more difficult for your wife. But, you know, that's the disposition um, most men should take. But most men, unfortunately, do not take that stand. Most men take sides with their mom. It is whatever mama says. Because we have made it such that we have so much baby, this, this, this young, our, our son, so much into, even into baby, them into marriage. That they keep on depending on us even when they get married. And we should not be. That shouldn't be. Otherwise, things get out of control. And once things get out of control and not in alignment, then there's trouble. So we should be very careful. You know, men, especially women, you know, you have to learn to, to let go. You know, you have to learn when to let go. Amen. And to let God. Amen. Tasha, good morning. Tasha says, taking the matter to God, also she needs to look for someone who the hobby looks up to and get him or her involved. Emotionally, the woman is not balanced right now, and the situation can trigger some other things. Yes, right now she's not balanced because she's not feeling the love from her husband. Yes, you know, she doesn't have the comfort of a, of a child, and she's not feeling the love from her husband. She's getting hostility from people who should love her, you know, so she's not balanced right now. So she needs to look for somebody, she's, you know, but that's she, you know, she said from her account, she says, this man is not listening to anyone. He doesn't want anybody to interfere in this matter. So the only person that she cannot actually take this matter to is God. The only person who can help her in this situation now is God. You know, it's only God that can help her bring her out of this situation because the mother has um, her husband's heart in her hands. You know, so it's only God that can help. Even she said she has invited the woman's daughter to come and speak with, with, with them, but they refused. They didn't heed her, they, they didn't heed her advice. Thank you, Sister Sheo. Sir Ogum, good morning. Yeah. Sir Maria says, as a waiting mother for seven years, this could be a test for her to be patient, humble, lovable, so love to her and take it to God in prayers. Do not give up. Yeah, thank you, Sir Maria. She should take it to God in prayers and not give up. You know, and it's at these times, too. It's at these times because, you know, that, there was something I, I said some years ago and I've seen it play out. Who do you surround yourself with? Even as a young lady growing up, who are the people you surround yourself with? They matter. Even when you're grown up, even as a wife, even as a mother, who are the friends you have around you? Because there are some situations that come to you or that will come to you that if you don't take your... Because the enemy targets, targets your faith. Because once he gets your faith in God, once he's able to destroy your faith in God, everything else is gone. Once it makes you lose faith in God, everything else is gone. So you've got to be... be intentional about the people you surround yourself with. 
are these people who can build will have to build you up. That's why the Bible is so that's why the Bible is so complete. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron, meaning that there's a sign that my iron might not be so sharp, I might be blunt, I will need another iron to sharpen me. There's nobody that is a superstar, no matter how high up you are in Christianity or as a child of God. You need somebody else that will suffer you at some point. Somebody else that will tell you, remind you of who you are in Christ. You need those people around you. So, look, look around you. Who are the people you have surrounded yourself with? Don't just surround the people around with people that, that don't have anything to offer. Don't surround you. Don't make that mistake because trying times will come. You need people who will help you pray. True friends. Two friends in Christ who will help you pray and help you to be able to stand and come out of that situation. Otherwise, if you're standing alone, it will be very difficult and you might fall. God did not create us in isolation. So you must be careful and intentional to look around you. Who are the people around me? Who can I call on when there's trouble? Because if you stay alone, and alone is, is a dangerous place to be. It is a dangerous place to be. So let's be careful as Christians. Amen. Sister Olivia says endurance is sacrosanct here. She should pray and understand that all the parties involved are humans just like her. Trust God and go through all medical tests while waiting. Thank you, Sister Olivia. She's gone through the she says she's gone there herself and her husband have gone through all the medical tests, you know, and you know, they're still waiting on the Lord, you know, and yeah, and, and she should pray and understand that all parties involved here are all humans. Yeah, you know, when, people, when some people have some spiritual authority over, for instance, they're all humans. But, you know, when you're, when you're married initially, when you get married initially, those, those early, you know, you know that this person, you know, have you seen a mother-in-law? Have you seen a father-in-law? Even the in-laws. Your in-laws play a very important role. If your husband is such that he's tied to his people so much, you will only need God for them to be on your side because if they turn against you, you wouldn't want that. No matter how, you might feel that they are humans. But humans can make things difficult for other humans. Humans can make things difficult for other humans. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Adenika says the waiting period, oh yeah, the waiting period is a trying time and it is not easy, but grace is needed to patiently wait and trust in God and God alone. They should stand as a team and be focused on God. Thank you, Sister Adenike. That's what they should stand at. Her husband and her, uh, that, that, that's what they should stand on. Her husband and herself, you know, should be a team. But right now, they are kind of divided. They are kind of divided because that, her mother in law is taking that position. Amen. So Abigail says she should pray for her husband too. Emotional abuse is one of the reasons she can't have a child. Yeah. She should pray for her husband too. Prayer. She needs prayer. She needs to pray. This, this is the time she needs to stand. Amen. Oge says, hmm, it's obvious her mother-in-law had an agenda for her right from the beginning. She needs to go into radical prayers because at this point, her husband is under the control spiritually of his mother. Because mocking the woman after sleeping on a matrimonial bed with her husband means her mother-in-law needs the fire of God to chase her out. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that, somebody's matrimonial bed is very significant. It's not a place anybody just goes to lie. So let's be careful. Thank you, Sister Oge. Thank you so much. So she needs to radically pray. She needs radical prayers. She needs radical prayers to take her position back. Amen. So Abigail says, another thing is the foundation of the marriage. The husband and wife were not prayer partners. Yeah, possibly they were not prayer partners. Amen. So God says, Firstly, mama has to relocate and it will be carried out by family members or is the son the only child? If so, please engage others to intervene while prayer and fasting to, while prayer and fasting to break the evil chain hold, holding her joy. She should still love mama, but from a safe distance until things get better. She must cry to God for the salvation of the woman. Also pray for the salvation and deliverance of her husband. All will be well. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ngozi. Mama needs to relocate, and she needs to pray, but she has to keep loving her. Yeah, and then pray for the salvation of her soul, and pray for the deliverance of her husband. Thank you. So, uh, they call, uh, Sir Palasha, they say, there's a foundational issue according to the story. She had Mama uh, brought a woman that was rejected. She went visiting. She got a cold welcome. Those two situations should have prepared her for spiritual battle. 
You should have to marry the guy. It's a dangerous path for any lady that the mother of the spouse does not accept. It's actually dangerous when your mother-in-law does not accept you. You know, but if the man says, you know, depends on what the husband was telling her then, sister, sister Folasha, you know, the man can tell her, don't, like he was saying from the account, don't mind my mama always talk. You know, he was treating it as a trivial matter, but he refusing to see the seriousness in it. You know, and maybe that was what gave her the confidence that, okay, mama doesn't really mean it, you know, and then she got into something that um, she's now having to battle with. Thank you, Sister Folashadi. Sabola says, God is able. Keep praying and fasting against evil so tight. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Sadeko says, secondly, I would say she should look for activities that will make her happy so that she won't lose her sanity. Thirdly, she needs to take her husband to God in prayers because it's obvious the man is manipulated and it is only God that can open his eyes. Yeah. She needs to look for something that will keep her busy and keep her, keep her mind off of all these distractions while she's still waiting. Safi says there are many things wrong in the marriage from the start. Number one, Bible says for a man shall leave his father and mother and join to his wife without separation. Second, the mother shouldn't have moved in from the start. Third, with the negative energy in the home, the wife has no peace of mind, hence could affect her fertility to rise. Fourth, the husband doesn't understand the union of marriage and therefore needs to be spoken to by either a counselor or church elders if they are Christians. They need godly counsel. They need godly counsel. Mama students that there's a lot of things wrong. Wrong from the onset. Mama students have moved in with them at all. And there's a whole lot of neg negative energy that will even make it more difficult for her to be able to conceive. Hmm. Thank you, Tafi. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. The angel says, she should trust God and wear the garment of patience and love. It is the plan of the devil, devil to rob her of her blessing. She should hand over the matter to God. Exactly. The devil wants to rob her of her peace, of her sanity, of her joy. Mm. Thank you, Sir, Sir Ejiro. Sir Adekon says, also, Mama has to leave the house. Whichever way, God will take her out of the house. She needs to pray her out. She needs her husband for God to answer the prayers. She should look for where, the, where fire prayers are being prayed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sister Adekon. She should, she should look for where and engage in prayers, serious prayers. That will help her. Safi says, if the wife has tried all things and no changes for her mental well-being, I suggest she find something to take her mind off her current situation, such as business, church, volunteering, further education. Bi Bible says, having done all, th all things, stand. She needs godly people around her to support her and pray with her. Mm, they can look for, they, <laughs> they can look after Mama at the village. Thank you so much, Safi. Yeah. For her mental well-being, she needs to look for something that will keep her occupied, to take her mind off a lot of things, for her mental well-being, for her sanity. Amen. Thank you so much. You know, I know we have spoken so many times to daughters-in-law. You know, we're always talking to, even, for, even you as a woman, you talk to your, your daughters. Okay, look at how you should behave when you get married. Yeah, this, this, but who really talks to the sons? You know, we, we've spoken to daughters-in-law on ways to love their mother, their mother's-in-law. But how do we address the ways and manners mother-in-law treat their daughters, especially their daughters-in-law, especially when their daughter-in-law is waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb? You know, how do we address that issue? You know, it's you and I, you understand? If we can start, if, if, even from the house of God, let there be a change from the house of God. When your son marries, you should know, okay, look, yeah, God has given you these children, you're their caretaker, bring them up. When you've done your duty, and it gets to the time for him to get married. You've, yes, you're advising. You always, your role as a mother will always be that of an advi uh, to advise. But not to say, okay, if you don't do what I've asked you to do, then there'll be a problem. Then it becomes to be witchcraft. It, it tends to be witchcraft when you, take that, when you take that stand. If you advise your child, you know, your child is of age, leave that child to be able to take decisions on, by himself or by herself. You know, we spoke to mother, daughters in law, please treat your, your mother your mother in law in a in a in a good manner, buy her things, uh, be nice to her, you know, be good, be good to her, love her. You know, but what about mother mothers in law? A whole lot of mothers in law are doing terrible things, which is not right. You know, which is not right. Remember, there's something I always say, and that's the, it's even the Bible. Where anything you're sowing is a seed. Because if you have a daughter and you're treating somebody else's daughter in in a way and manner that is dishonorable. Remember you have daughters of your own who are going to get married or who you want to get married and who will live in another man's house. 
So you ought to be very careful how you treat another man or woman's child. You've got to be very careful. Amen. Amen. Don't take the position of, an, of Alpha and Omega in anyone's life. God is the only Alpha. God is the only Omega. So we must be very careful. Amen. And then in some cultures in Nigeria, in some cultures in Nigeria, some mothers-in-law, in some cultures in Nigeria, some mothers-in-law brought into their son, their son and daughter-in-law's room without consideration. What do you have to say about that? You know, I know in Igbo tradition, in some parts of Igbo land, especially my people from Igbo land, you will see the mother-in-law, she wants to speak to her son. As she's knocking, she's opening the door. She's not even asking, can I come in? She's letting herself in by fire by force. You know, and I think that culture should be abolished. Whatever it is, you know, we Igbos, let us, I don't know if, if there's other, another culture or other cultures in Nigeria where who do that same thing. But it should be abolished, it should be stopped. You should give, even when your son is growing up, when you have a, a teenage child, you should give that child privacy when he wants to dress up or when she wants to dress up. You should give that child privacy. Amen. You should give that child privacy. Don't just bad into their, into their in, 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 especially when, when, when he's, he or she is married. You're knocking and you're just entering in, in, into, the, in, 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 into their room. You're not even considerate. You're sitting on the bed and taking the position. So let us just be careful here yeah, as women. You know, this is not the first um, um, case study or story that I've heard about on, on, this, on, this, um, about, on, on this kind of issue. You will see women, they will, because you used to make clothes for your, your sons when they were little. So you now think that it's a, life, it's a lifetime uh, role for you to play. That is totally wrong. You will decide what is, with the clothes that he will wear. You will make a, a, a tradition, I mean, the, the outfit for him from, from, from the east and bring to him in Lagos. You know, let's be careful. Let's be careful and, know, and fear God. Let us know that, you know, that God has set things in place. And when we, when, when, when we go against God, we are sinning against God. If we have the fear of God, then we should learn to abide by the rule and the laws of God. Amen. Amen. And then, I want to ask, um, I, I want to ask, I want to, my last question is, what advice um, you know, do you have for this lady? You know, she says she isn't comfortable in her home anymore. You know, many of us have said, pray. You know, yeah, pray. Pray for her. I, 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 you know, keep on praying. Pray for your mother-in-law. Pray for your husband to be delivered from the grip of the enemy. You know, so what advice? Because she said it's too much on her. What, what, what else what can you tell her? You know, because I won't say, you know, of course, we're not going to say leave your home. It's a, it's, yes, it's an uncomfortable place. You have called people to speak with um, your husband and he's not even listening to you. He's not even paying attention, you know, and he doesn't want to. You know, so the advice for this lady I want to give is from 1 Corinthians 10, um, verse 13. And it says, the temptations in your life are no different from, from what others experience. The temptations in your life are no different from what others have, ex have experienced. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than, than, than you. You've got to learn to trust God. The word of God says, having done all, stand. Stand, stand where? Stand on the word of God. So that Bible portion says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. Others have gone through this. You know? So just know that God, the God that has kept them, he will also keep you. So you've got to learn to stand. Having done all, you've done all the medical tests, you've gone for medical examinations, you know, you're praying and believing God. So that's my advice to you. Just keep on have to believe, keep waiting. Keep waiting, but you've got to enforce, make your prayers more. Take it on a higher level. Take it on a higher level. People around you have got to pray with you. In fact, you've got to take charge of your home. I think you're too, you're kind of relaxed in your home. You understand? Have you tried, because I know from this case study now, I know you, you, you didn't say that you, um, you tried making breakfast and you rejected the breakfast. The only thing you have said here is that Mama makes the breakfast, she gets up early. So you've got to try to get up early too. You can even tell Mama, Mama, no, I want to make my husband, you say it in a nice way, I want to make my husband food, it's my husband. Even try to do it and tell her, Mama, ah, who was cooking daddy's food, that you were cooking daddy's food, allow me to cook my own husband's food. 
you know, tell her that in a jokingly, in a, in, a, in, in, in a pleasant manner, so that she won't say that, she won't take offense and say that you were rude to her. So just tell her like that, and get up early, she gets up early, you to wake up early, and tell her, let me do today's own. Prepare your husband's breakfast, prepare the lunch. When he refuses, then you, then you know what to do. But don't just sit back and say, okay, because mama has taken that position of uh, preparing the, the lunch and, bre- and the, uh, uh, the breakfast, lunch and dinner. I'm just going to relax and I'm, going to, I'm just going to be sulking. No! Take your place in your home. Take your place in your home and you've got to be very prayerful. You know, pray, take charge of your home. Anywhere, any place that God has placed you, you've got to take authority over that place. We started this, um, um, this today's uh, healing marriages with the song by Sinai that says, I know who I am in Christ. You've got to know who you are in Christ. When you know who you are, the word of God says, anywhere the souls of your feet are tread upon, that you shall possess. So you've got to possess your home. You've got to take possession of your home. Take your place in your husband's life. Take your place as the wife of the home. Prayerfully. Prayerfully. Be praying. Ah, you're, you can you go to a ministry or a church that, that you know, that, uh, that is Bible based. So that your are your, 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 your base on the word of God, your strength on the word of God will, will increase. Because when you know who you are, you're praying and you're, ah, Mama, how are you? Mama, ah, she will confuse her. Unless my child, you're you're nice to her, you're praying. But if she sees that you're upset, she calls you names, you're upset. She tells you things, you're upset. So keep doing it more. So learn to do those, uh, learn to learn to take charge. Pray, ah, Mama, how are you? Ah, Mama, this, today, this is the day. Even repeat scripture to her. You will confuse her. That's the way to confuse the enemy. Because when the devil do some things, even in normal life, in real life, even the, this is not the only situation that you're going to face. Because whenever when some things come to you, you know, and maybe the devil throws some things at you or some arrows at you, and you give way and you say, oh God, where is God in this? God is looking at you to take charge of that situation. He's looking at you and I to take charge of that situation. Because the enemy wants you to go under and cover yourself under your duvet and hide. But no, that's not the time to hide. That's the time to... What is God saying? The Bible says this. It is well. It is well. My marriage, I'm going to have this. You need to speak. I'm, I'm going to have children. Even if Mama God tells you that Mama, you're not, uh, you, you're a man. Like, Mama, I'm not a man. Can't you see? I'm, I'm well shaped. I'm going to have children. You, you confuse her. Answer every unpleasant word with a word of pleasant, with, 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 with pleasant words. You will confuse the enemy. When the enemy thinks that he has got to, that is when you should even dress up and shine and come out and say, I'm, I'm here, I'm a child of God, because I am light. The word of God says, anywhere I enter, darkness will disappear. No matter how, that, how uh, whatever darkness the enemy tries to put on you, wear your robe as a child of God, as a child of the kingdom of light, I am light. I will not hide. He says darkness are not able to comprehend the light. So it's the darkness that will hide when they see the light. So we've got to know who we are in Christ. You don't allow those situations to bring you under. It is not easy, but if you hold on to the word, hold on to the word, keep pronouncing the word. Why do you think that God, God told Joshua in Joshua 1, chapter, in Joshua 1 verse 8, this book of the law must, he didn't say it should not, he said it must not depart from your mouth. You, sh- you must meditate upon it day and night, for in it you will have good success. If you do not meditate on the word of God, when things come, you don't have any word, there's no power, there's no word to say. And the only thing the enemy runs away from is the word of God. So you've got to know the word. You've got to know how to reply. When somebody tells you something, don't just keep quiet. Don't keep quiet and swallow it. No. There is anything that anybody says to you that you don't like, reject it. No, that's not for me. That's not who I am. Look at what God says I am. Look at who God says I am. I am light. And when I enter, darkness has got to disappear. I may not have this thing now. But I'm going to have it. So you, because you've got to know who you are. See, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ. Yeah, it might be taking time now, but God will meet me at that point. It might not be looking rosy now, but it will look rosy. It will, it will be well. That's why we, what we are called for. The word of God says God has called us. He says creation, has, creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. So when are you going to manifest? Manifestation is when you speak it. You've got to speak it to the atmosphere. Become that person that God wants you to be. Involve your things in, your, involve your life in things that will take your mind off those things, things that will make you happy. When you're happy, you confuse the enemy. 
Amen. So that's my advice to you. Be nice to your mother-in-law. Pray for your husband. Proverbs 31 says, the, the, the heart of a husband safely trusts in her. So you've got to pray that your husband's heart will safely trust you. Amen. And pray, use the word of God and pray. God says a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they will become one. And mama, you are not part of my husband. Yes, you give, back, you give death to him, but you are not the one that will make him one. I am his one. He and I are one. You begin to speak it because when you speak the word of God, then it begins to work for you. If you take the Bible and put it under your pillow, it's not going to work. You've got to get the Bible because that's why it's called the Testament. It's the will. Read the will. Old Testament will, New Testament, so that you know those things that have been freely given to you and begin, you begin to stand. And the Bible says, having done all, having done all, stand on the word. Don't, don't move. The devil wants you to move from your position. But no, I'm not going to move. This is my stand. I'm going to have a child. Don't let anybody move you and, and cover your glory. No. Amen. Amen. So when you when you're playing that you're, you're, at the end of the day, you've discovered that you've taught your mother-in-law a lesson in a good way, she might indeed now give her life to Christ. She might indeed now know that, come, ah, that's true. What I've done to this girl is not good. And then she will repent. And then turn a new leaf. And then you, you also would have gotten your husband back. But you've got to take charge of your home. You've got to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. God help us. And I said again, you've got to look around you. Who are those people you have surrendered your service? Because some people need to back you up. Some people, you need strength. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Sister Samorayo. Thank you, Sister Vera, Sister Abigail, Sister Oge. Haiti, good. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Adekemi. Thank you, Kala. Good, mo- good morning and thank you. Fala Shade, thank you. Sabiodu, thank you. Sabiodu, thank you. Sabumi, thank you. Sabigel, thank you. Sabiodu, thank you. Yes, Sabiodu, thank you. Sabola, thank you. Thank you also. Sabiodu, thank you. Sabiodu, thank you. Oluwatosi, thank you so much. Sabi, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you all. I appreciate your contributions. You're doing so wonderful. You don't know the work you're doing here. You know, like I said last week, Samir, thank you. Santiric, thank you. I thank you all. I might not be able to call everyone's name, but thank you. Sir Ini, thank you. Sir Odimba, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, you're doing a whole lot here. And God, I pray, my prayer for you, for you and I is that God will bless us and uphold us. As we are strengthening other people's homes, God will strengthen our home. God will strengthen the homes of our children. God will strengthen the lives of our children. God will strengthen our own lives. Please like and share this broadcast. Like and share. 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 Good morning once again. And thank you for joining me here at Healing Marriages. It's been wonderful having you all today. It's been wonderful having you here today. Healing Marriage. Is a program that has been brought to us by the Ministry of Daughters of Destiny Interdenominational Fellowship. We meet here every Wednesday, 9 a.m. Healing Marriage is a place where we come to share deep insights concerning our marriages that will cause our marriages to thrive, as well as the time of healing that will bring uh, healing to those who are hurting in their marriages. This program has been produced by Apostle Bussola Degede of the Ministry of Daughters of Destiny. And my name is Vivian Unandumatuku, your host. So see you next Wednesday, 9 a.m. God bless you. Please like and share this broadcast. Like and share so that many people can participate so that it can also be a blessing to others. God bless you. See you next, see you next Wednesday. Amen.